Okay, so uh, this uh, delay thing is going to bug me. So how do I turn it off? I'm going to the options menu, and I'm going to turn on low latency monitoring. And now it sounds a heck of a lot better, right? Uh, remember, we had low latency monitoring on off because we wanted our reverb. If you want no delay, then you turn low latency monitoring on. You will not get your reverbs. If you don't mind the delay and you want your reverb while you're recording, then it's got to be on. It's, it's kind of one way or the other. So now we're, if you'll notice, we've got our waveforms, we've got our guitar track all the way across, but if, there's our marker right there for chorus one. I'm going to command bracket to zoom in. And I noticed on uh, David Bowie's original track, when he comes in onto this, this is ground control to Major Tom, the chorus, he has a hi-hat, I mean a crash on bar beat two and beat four. So check this out. We're going to not do all the so Here comes the chorus. Two. Crash. 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 And it's one, two, four, two. And if you're listening in stereo, and if you have headphones right now, I've noticed that the crash is on the left side, the harmony vocals on the left side, the main vocals on the right side, so we can do that panning and stuff the way he did it as well. So let's go back to Pro Tools. Again, I'm always hitting Command Tab to go back and forth between applications. And we're going to put that crash in, and we're going to do it without a MIDI keyboard, okay? How do we do that? We're going to, I'm going to go right next to the click track, and I'm going to create a new track. Let me show you something. I'm going to go back to the mix screen. You'll notice I've got my click, my guitar, my vocals, um, and then my reverbs. I have a system, and my system is always, in every song I do, on the far, far left is always my click track. Then there are my drums, starting with kick, snare, uh, cymbals. Then I have percussion or loops. Then I have bass. Then I have keyboard guitars. Then I have keyboards. Then I have vocals. Then I have my effects. So when I open up any session in Pro Tools, I know on my left side is going to be my drums, and my right side is going to be my vocals and my effects. And it's really helpful to get a system and stick to a system. So when I create this crash, I want it to be on the left side. If I click over here next to the click track, click, uh, and I hit Command Shift N to make a new track, we're going to make a new stereo instrument track. All right. And we're going to make it up. We're going to first name it. We're going to name it Crash. Okay. And then we're going to go up to the top here where it says Insert. We're going to insert Expand. Instrument. Sorry. Expand. Okay. So here comes Expand. It's familiar. We've seen it. Uh, and what do we do? We Can we choose just Crashes over here? We go to Drums. And I go over here uh, under, sorry, Drums. That's uh, kind of wonky, and go to Crashes menu. I could do that. Or what if I wanted uh, to program my own drum parts? What if I wanted a kick, snare, and I wanted all sorts of drum sounds across the whole keyboard? That is found right here. So where before we created MIDI channel 1, 2, 3, 4, we made our own multi using four different MIDI channels. Watch this. I'm going to go here to Factory Default. I'm going to go to Drums. I'm going to go to Pop Kit right here, and then BAM! Okay, you'll notice everything is on MIDI channel 1, but if, if I had my MIDI keyboard plugged in, you would notice across the keyboard from low to high, starting would be the kick, snare, and this has always been uh, from MIDI from day 1. The kick is always on C1, the snare is always on C2, the rim shot is always on the C sharp, right above the C, in between the snare and the kick. Um, and then the symbols are up a little bit farther. So we want a symbol. How do we know where it is? Well, we really don't, but we don't care. We're going to draw a MIDI note, and then we're going to drag the MIDI note until we find the symbol sound, okay? I'm going to make this bigger so we hear it. Also, if you wanted to hear this across <clears throat> the keyboard, you'd have to have it in record, which we don't need it to be in record. I don't need this anymore because we've, we've chosen our sound. I'm going to Command S, save, while I'm thinking about it. Command equals to go back here. And this is all my tracks are kind of wonky. I want everything to be the same size. Do I have to do this by hand? No. Right here next to the name is this uh, triangle that points down. If I hold the option key 
and I choose track height and I go to small, everybody goes small. Now I take this one crash track and I pull it down where I can see it. I'm going to go right here to the course. I'm going to click. I'm going to command bracket to zoom in. And I know by clicking here, this is beat one, this is beat two. You can see right here. You can see right here. This shows you where you're clicking. And we want it to come, here's the chorus, this is ground control to major arm on the beat 2 and beat 4. So why don't we just get one crash and then put it on beat 2 and beat 4, and then we can just duplicate it, right? How do we draw a MIDI sound? We grab the pencil tool. We are, we are in grid mode. We're right at beat 2. Look, here's beat 2 right here. I go to beat 2, and I can click anywhere. And you see, I just, I got this one note. And... If I now I'm going to get out of the pencil tool because we've already drawn. We don't want to draw any more notes right now. Let's say we want this one crash. Now I go to the grabber tool, and you'll notice. And which grabber tool am I using? I'm. It, I guess it doesn't matter, but I have it on time right now. So that's not the crash I want. I'm going to drag this until I hear. It's going to be probably down. Okay, that's kind of what I want, right? So, it's on beat 2. And remember how we held the option key and dragged to create a reverb? I'm going to do the same thing with this MIDI note. I'm going to hold the option key, and I'm going to drag it to beat 4. Now we've got... I'm going to go to the selector tool to play, or we can be using the super tool. Great, okay. So, I'm going to take that... I'm going to zoom out, command bracket to the left, and I'm going to go up until the word day. I'm going to scroll over here to day. So I don't know how many times, how many repeats that is, so why don't I make sure I, I've got one bar here. I'm in grid mode. I'm going to hit command D all the way, command D, command D, command D, up until the marker for day. And I'm going to save, and now we've got that crash on Okay, so now we've got the crash on two and four, and now we're ready to sing the vocal part. So I'm going to go to the mix screen, and right next to my other vocal, I'm probably going to create a new track and call this the chorus vox. So I'm going to hit Command Shift N. We've got a mono audio track. That's exactly what we want. And then the first thing I'm going to do is chorus vox one. I'm going to make sure I'm in mic input one. I probably want some reverb, so I'm going to, it doesn't matter which one, hold the option key and drag. And now, if I uh, turn on low latency monitoring, I've got my reverb is back. And I'm ready to record the chorus. So this is where I go to the edit screen. I go to where I'm zooming in at, where I'm punching in at. And I know I'm going to be punching in right there, but I always click right before it. I make sure with the transport window that I am in quick punch mode. This is where I turn pre-roll on and off, Command-K. And let's move on and go to record the vocal in the next lesson. We're going to use a really cool thing called loop recording.